Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about a uh, very exciting Azure service which goes by the name of Azure AI Foundry. It was formerly known as Azure AI Studio. Uh, now they have rebranded and uh, in the recent Ignite Summit or uh, the event that happened, I think uh, on 17th of November, a lot of new features have been announced and uh, you will try to see it from someone who is you know uh, very new to gen ai ai world i do not have uh, much experience you know working with ai applications i am mostly working as a you know data architect working on data engineering projects so uh, it would be exciting to know what we can do especially if one do not have information about or much you know knowledge about how ai operates so what are the you know nuances inside ai applications uh or not necessarily are very familiar with how to you know write code hands-on code uh, with you know uh, the ai services so that would be interesting to know and uh, microsoft or azure they're trying to make life much easier uh, for the people who do not have technical background although i would not classify as a non-technical person entirely but if you are a non-technical person you do not have any it exposure maybe you would find uh, the use of the services uh, you know, easier and it would be intuitive they are you know uh, doing it in both ways so even if you are uh, experienced guy and if you want to customize more things around uh, your applications that would involve writing python code so that you could also do that you don't have to go into a different you know service but having said that, I think uh, there are a lot of services right now in Azure and maybe what they're trying to do right now is they are trying to bring everything under one umbrella and they're calling it Azure AI Foundry. Uh, so with that, uh, let's uh, you know try to go on a screen share and uh, I've done some small experimentation around some of this stuff. So let's try to look into that. So before exploring the service, let's you know uh, look at a very high level architecture of how Azure AI Foundry service you know is uh, formed or how the components are distributed. More importantly, uh, let's not worry about these arrows uh, and you know the the low level details. What we are trying to do here is we are trying to get familiar with some of the concepts or some of the terminologies so you have something called project uh, and then you have a hub so as soon as you open azure, uh, azure ai foundry service or azure ai foundry uh, studio you will be able to see uh, hub and project and underneath that you will have different services <clears throat> so it's maybe similar to let's say uh, databricks databricks manager source if you have to uh, do a comparison and if you have already worked with Azure Databricks so once uh, you provision an Azure Databricks uh, service you get a lot of other services underneath it uh, that are partly managed uh, in a managed resource group so you have uh, virtual networks you have virtual machines uh, you have a blob storage or a storage account and uh, maybe some of the other services similarly uh, once you provision Azure AI Foundry or Studio service, and once you start working on any of uh, the implementations, uh, under the hood, you would be needing different AI services, Azure AI services. And in order to group it together, they have something called projects. And also they have something called hubs, which is you know, analogous to workspaces. So, hub is uh, at the you know highest level under the hub you can have multiple projects uh, so that's how it is uh, uh, defined you can see here uh, you have Op azure open ai as the main component then you have ai foundry hub which sits under your machine learning services if you talk about the category of services and then you have ai foundry project which is under uh, again machine learning services but here you can clearly see that it says a project is a child resource of the hub the azure resource provider for a project is this 
So now we will uh, go into the Azure portal and I will show you one a very a small uh, kind of uh, application, not application, I would say, uh, an experiment that I've done and uh, that would help us maybe uh, you know try to understand uh, in terms of percentage 20 to 30 percent of what Azure Foundry is or what Azure AI Foundry you know is capable of doing. Okay, so now uh, let's look at the uh, demo now. Uh, so this is uh, my home screen. So as soon as I log into Azure portal, I see the screen. So let me go to Azure AI services first. And one thing uh, to you know, uh, maybe call out here is that as I uh, maybe uh, you know, talked about in the uh, introduction of this video that we are going to work with Azure AI Foundry, but it was formerly known as Azure AI Studio. So don't get confused, you know, with Studio versus Foundry. It's one and the same thing. And this is kind of a sub portal inside a portal. So uh, that's, you know, uh, easy to remember. So that's easy to remember. So as soon as I open Azure AI services, I see this. Uh, you can see there are a bunch of you know Azure AI services that are clubbed here. You have Azure Open AI, you have AI Search, Computer Vision, and all the other things. So, it not only AI, they are also you know uh, mixed or broad traditional ML services uh, under this Azure AI services. So let's click on this and see uh, which window pops up. And we can see that this is uh, the screen. Now we want to go to the portal. So Foundry AI Foundry or AI Studio is nothing but a sub portal. So that's important to you know uh, understand. So let's click here, and you can see on top it says Azure AI Studio, but this is Azure AI Foundry. So once you open Azure AI Foundry, it has uh, brought you inside a hub, which is AI AI Hub. And then inside AI Hub, I think we would be having projects. I think this would be a project if I'm not so sorry. This is a hub. So yeah, so uh, I think one thing uh, that I told you is confusing is uh, the difference between projects and hubs. As per the documentation, you could have multiple projects in GitHub, uh, but that is you know worth exploring. So maybe if you if we have multiple teams, uh, and each team has is working on a different domain or a different BU, then we can have multiple you know projects. Or maybe you can think of uh, this in CI/CD process, or maybe you know how you would operate. Uh, software lifecycle development uh, that is you can have one project as dev the other one as queue and the third one as prod or maybe you will have three different hubs but that is something which is not clear and might become clear when we work on you know real time projects <clears throat> so here on the left you can see uh, there are different uh, options you have model catalog you have uh, uh, a kind of node that says playgrounds under playgrounds you have chat assistant real-time audio so these are different modalities what are modalities uh, like you know if you want to uh, create a Genai application on audio files then you can use this if you want to create a Genai application on chat you can use this uh, and similarly if you want to create a Genai application on images then you can click on images then we have different tools, fine tuning, Azure and AI evaluation, batch jobs. There are a bunch of stuff here which I haven't, you know, got a chance to look into it. But what I did was, uh, so you can already already see our deployment here. So let's, you know, maybe click on chat. So we are already under chat. Let's maybe click on assistance. 
so it's a step by step approach so first you have to decide what you know problem statement you are trying to solve in this case what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to you know load bunch of uh, pdfs and then uh, i'm thinking that i would add a rag functionality on top of it so i can ask questions that could it should only you know provide or return answers from the pdf that i've uploaded so for that you would have to create a deployment let's see if uh, we can do that so i've already created a deployment here and uh, you can create a new deployment so without deployment you will not be able to do anything deployment here doesn't mean that you are creating a web app or anything it just means that you know uh, if you have uh, decided that you are going to create a chatbot then you would need a model for that llm model and there could be uh, any model so you, right now i think uh, in the model catalog you have 1800 plus cat, uh, models so you can choose any model out of it so here i have you know, chosen uh, gpt uh, uh, 4 or mini and because this is uh, because i'm thinking of designing a rag system i have to upload a pdf document i have already done that and behind the scenes or underneath it it had used this you know model text embedding ada002 model so what it does is uh, without going into details uh, what it does is whatever document that i've uploaded it has encoded it using encoded and embedded the you know data using this embedding model um, so this is important to understand so once you have the deployments uh, you can go, again go to the playground so in the right now you can see here that uh, i have selected gpt 4 o mini as the model large language model which I, I would be using and then you have an option of selecting your data you can select your data uh, if you select your data then it becomes a rag system if you do not select your data it is going to you know do a search on the entire internet's data so let's maybe play with this so what i've done is uh, as a pdf document i have uploaded a resume um, ideally i should not have done that so i've uploaded a resume of one of my ex colleagues and his name is ashish so let me just you know type in a simple question who is ashish so right now it should just run a no random result because uh, it doesn't know who ashish is so you can clearly see see here that it's a very generalized or generic answer that you see on on your screen uh, it says that the name Ashish could refer to various individuals. So what if if we, you know, select our own data? I think I already have the data. Why it is not allowing me to select that? This is interesting because. Before recording this, you know, video, I had selected that embedding, which is as good as you know your data. Let me see. Does it give me an option? Hello, is your blob storage? So I think I might have, you know, found what is happening, but I still not able to fully understand this. Understand this. So you can see here we have two projects with the same names and the dates. The created dates are also same. Everything uh, you know looks same. It is on, on the same hub. I think we were on the project first. Uh, I'm not sure. I think instead of going into hubs, we had to go into projects. So once you go into projects, you see, you see a different, slightly different, you know, UI. Uh, you have, uh, you don't see a playground uh, as a separate node. Playground is an option, is a, is a 
a kind of a single clickable link here and there are other you know options i might be able to you know see my data here so if you can see here it shows my assets so i can still see the models and endpoints the same models and endpoints that we saw earlier then we have data plus indices it's also there so this is uh, the data that i uploaded but anyways uh, you know let's try to focus on the main problem statement uh, what we are trying to do is implement a rag system so we are now into chat playground now if i try to add my data source i think i can add the data source here so this is uh, the embedded data source so whatever i did the pdf document i uploaded it has created an embedded uh, file out of it or it has you created an embedded data out of it and it has stored that into a vector database now vector database also is uh, you know a concept that needs detailed uh, attention so you can create a vector database with various options so this is vector plus keyword which means that i'll be able to query based on the the semantic as well as the keyword uh, you know uh, matches so let's try to answer the question again who is ashish and let's see i think we should be able to get answer that is taken from the pdf uh, which is nothing but our resume as you can see here ashish shares is a qa engineer based in bangalore and he has this much of experience of data sorry this much experience in qa engineering so this is how it works looks very interesting and now i can create so this is just a playground uh, this might not be you know visible for the other users but we can create a web app out of it so that other users can also use it and they can query uh, the data just like a chat gpt app and then there are a bunch of other features like so what if if you want to you know um, don't use a ui for designing this then we can you know use code as well there is something called prompt flow which is uh, maybe to orchestrate the things then evaluation if you want to evaluate the output of your uh, models and bunch of other things safety and security if you want to you know safeguard your data so really interesting this was uh, you know the first very first uh, kind of a playground experiment that i did and uh, i'll try to continue on this hopefully if i get bandwidth and we'll try to create more videos out of it let me know if you have any questions so we'll try to explore more on that and uh, don't forget to su subscribe and thank you for watching thank you